So hello and welcome to the video lecture series of mobile application development students. Uh, in this today's session, I am going to show you that how we can fetch the data from the live web URL. Fine. I am also going to show you that how we can make the API or I can say the JSON figure API as well as you can create your own JSON data and create your API. Okay. See, we are just going to create some basic API. Resources we have. So let me first uh, just show something that what we are going to do today. So we are just going to create an application that will return some amount of data in terms of the API. So let me just open up the API over here. So this is a, a website that is known as api.endpoint.io. Wait a minute. endpoint.io I can say it might be like this okay so it's an endpoint.io students what you need to do you just need to do the login over here okay and then you can create your all API over here create your own JSON and generate the link without making any uh, hosting the API you can generate the link for that as well so I'm just going to okay so I have this account students uh, and I have already created a JSON data as a taste user data fine so this is my API if you want to create your own then you can also the create as well see by creating the new you can create your own API as well. These are the basic JSON API that we have. So let me just uh, create an uh, array of the students. So this is my array of students. We can say like this. See students, then the column and then open up. This will be the array. So let me just uh, do like this and that. So this can be the JSON format okay now and if you are a little bit confused then just check out the json array format as well so it must be contains like y then colon then curly brackets and then inside it you just need to spend send out the data so this must be the curly bracket uh, square brackets if you want to create the array over here so let me just create the array of the students then open it like this students then the colon and then like this then pass the values so key and value so let me just open up see this is the curly bracket the object value is name colon and the I can say the particular value is a genus now comma over here just do the comma over here copy this paste it Suppose the name is uh, Dhruv, the name is Rajvi, the name should be Mithil, the name should be Mayuri. Fine, so these uh, students names are here. I have created, if you want to copy and paste it them, then you can also do that. Okay, you can create the multiple, the JSON objects. See, I am going to take only one field over here, okay. So memory one, it should be like Drupi, Jetan, Ketan, Maulik, Nirmal, Kaushal, whatever the name you want to write, you just write down over here. And then you can save your data like this. See. So this must be saved like this. So you can just click over edit button, student data and save from here. So now your API has been saved successfully. You can also access this API by clicking on this button. See my JSON API is ready. So its URL is this. So just need to copy over here this URL and paste it wherever you want to show the data. So just imagine the situation here. We want to show the data from here as well so this my api has already been successfully written over here 
Now, let me show you that what we are going to build today. So here first we have the text view that shows a data like JSON web data parser example. So here is my text view. See. Then one button is over there. The, it's known as the fetch data button. When you click on that particular button, we are going to call a particular thread. So for the pre-processing and processing loader, you can see over there. And once the processing has been completed, I am going to uh, see this is my button and this is my list view. I am going to bind or show my data in the list view over here. Fine. Now this is my main activity.java file. What we need, so this is uh, just a minute. Let me just cancel out the basic extra code from the particular file. So, here, students, uh, we are not going to perform, we are, not, we are not going to map the data with the help of the normal binding. Here, I am selecting the view binding. So, view binding is a concept where you can bind the multiple view components simultaneously in the Java code. For that, if just in the situation, if you have the five different buttons in your file, and you need to define the five different Java variables for here, like button name one, name two, name three, name four, then you need to bind it here as well, like find view by ID, find view by ID, and like that. So, if you do not want to go like this, then you can need to create a class. It's known as activity main dot binding object, and then you need to uh, change the activity binding like this thing. Binding is equal to activity main binding dot inflate the which which you need to create the binding object by calling the get layout inflator. And then set content view change your functions from binding dot get root. Instead of set content view uh, r dot id dot main act activity underscore main file, you need to write like this binding dot get root. So I have already binded up my activity over here. Then when you try to fetch something or call a method on the button, then just write the binding dot fetch button dot set on click listener. So now you do not need to write anything. You just need to uh, write like this binding dot and the whatever the XML ID over there, it will be appear through here. See like uh, binding dot. See, we can see the fetch button, list view data, text, text, set view. So every XML button is over here. So you just need to write like this, then binding dot and set on click listener. Fine. So you can go like this. Let me show the first activity XML file. So this is the code for the activity XML file where we have taken the real data layout, the text view, width is match parent, height is the wrap content, margin is 20 dp, center horizontal is true, text is JSON web data parser, text is 20 dp, ID is a title text view. Then we have a button, the ID is a fetch button, it's under below of the text view and then we have the list view where ID is list view data. Now this is my main activity file students, here I have taken uh, on create method. First what I need to do, see I just need to bind it up the data so I have already did it. Then I am going to create a button on click event and then fetch data. See what I want to show over here, I just want to fetch the data when the thread runs. That means I want to show a processing icon which is running continuously. That's why I am going to create a class, a name is fetch data that extends a thread. Then created a string, the data is equal to null and then to call a thread, I am going to call a run method over here, right, a run method over here. So here inside the run method, first I am going to show the processing bar, that's why we need handler object. So you just need to write down like handler, handler is equal to new handler on the bow of the onCreate method and then go down, just write like handler dot post new runnable where the run method is implemented like process dialog is equal to new process dialog main activity dot this so i have also created the process dialog object over here see see this is the process dialog object process dialog and then creating the process dialog object for the particular main activity dot java then process dialog is set message fetching data. So whenever you uh, data is fetching, this uh, ma message will appear. Process dialog dot set cancelable false and the process dialog dot show. This will show the process dialog. Now what next? See here we want to fetch the data from the URL. So we need to create a URL object like URL URL is equal to new URL. And here I have passed my new API URL. 
fine now call the http connection object so create a http url connection object is here then dot open connection it will show you some error so you just need to uh, click on the alternator it will automatically convert to try catch block now we need to create the input stream input stream http url connection object dot get input stream and then buffer reader inside the buffer reader i'm going to pass the object of the input stream like new input stream reader input stream and then the string line is there so what we are going to do is we are just going to fetch the data see i have passed the url from here through this url i get the data in the form of the string and then i'm going to read it one by one by using the buffer reader or i can say line by line and show it the data over here see this data is defined over here string data so from the data i'm going to check first the data is empty or not if my data is not empty then creating the object of the json object what we have we have the json array json array object dot get json array what is the name of the array that we need to define over here see if you have seen my api my name of the array is student so i am just going to replace from user to the students and then what is the column name my column name is name only so from the student array and we are going to run the for loop and get the json object see this will return the json array json array in the form of the students from the students array we are going to fetch the json objects i have stored the json objects in the form of the names and from the names we are going to fetch the column name and then add the new add the name in the form of the new user list so what's the new user list so i have already defined a new array list in the with the string type it's a new user list i have already defined an array adapter is a new list adapter now see here i have just uh, this this code i have just used for the checking purpose only so you should not uh, write like this a uh, size of the new user list and everything so you just you write up to new up user list dot add of name now next so here i have also created a, again the handler the post method this post method is used once the processing is completed then what to do so students once the processing is completed you just need to notify uh, you just need to add the data to the user list so this processing shows you when you click on the fetching button and then the thread is run all the data is fetching from the server once the fetching is completed then it is should notify the my list adapter that all the data we get so that's why we need to you write like this see this particular code do not forget to write like this so dialog box is showing we just need to dismiss it and set uh, notify all data changes and print out the log data now what text next students uh, inside our particular above class this is the inner class okay remember this is a inner class the fetch data is inside of the our main class now here inside the main activity i am going to call a fetch data button set on click listener and new fetch data dot start now before this i just need to initialize my user list so what to write in the user list initialization i am just create a new array list object new array list user list and set in the add adapter add adapter that contains this command dot layout a simple list item one comma the data fine now we need to bind with like this like binding dot list view data dot set adapter new list adapter now let me just run the particular code and show you the output that how it works for these students do not forget to give the permission of the internet because we are going to fetch the data from the internet only now let me run the code and show you the output start so let me just click on the fetch data button students so this processing is uh, continuously going on see here i can get the output see if you can see the memory memory one and everything over here now if you want to change the data from the api then just change the data and check the our output as well so we can get the idea the whether it is fetching the current data or not so this is my api wait a minute so if you are going to change from Janis to live demo, from Dhruv to test demo, from Rajvi to live test demo, and save the API. So now the data has been changed successfully. 
and let me just fetch the data again see i'm not going to run the application again i'm just going to fetch the data again okay so fetching up the data so if you can see uh, the data is appended so you can see the test demo live demo data what you need to do once you try to fetch the data you just need to clear your user list as well okay so before fetching it we just need to clear the data so let me just do one thing uh, instead of this let me just write like new okay so it's a new user list dot clear is method is there okay clear method is there now let me just run the application again and show the output that how it works so it is uh, see you can see if you can see the test data live data is so also here, here but it is appended of uh, of the previous data so let me just run this application again so here application running again and we just click on the fetch data so we can see the all the current data that we have recently added now let me just change the data instead of live demo live to demo test to demo live test demo to just click over here taste it save the data and now fetch the data again so fetch the data so here if you can see once again students we get the live to demo test to demo and live to demo test to demo data as well so this is our live processing is working right now this is all about the fetching of the json data by using uh, the web api okay by using the json object and everything else fine so if you have any doubt then please feel free to ask me thank you so much